great being here. My name is Steve Olds, that's spelled O-L-D-S, and I'm with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service. Our office is here in Ann Arbor over on Jackson Road, 7203 Jackson Road. And not only do I cover Washtenaw County, our office, but our service center also covers Wayne County as well. Um, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, just real quick, we've been around for a lot of years. We started out in the late 1930s as a soil erosion service. We morphed into the Soil Conservation Service, and most recently we're the Natural Resources Conservation Service. We're a unique federal agency in the fact that all of our delivery of conservation information as well as application assistance is done in cooperation through local conservation districts. And local conservation districts have elected board members and then some, like a district, some district employees. Our services are, are done in cooperation with them. And uh, so it's a great kind of a local type approach. And it was found from back during the old, uh, like during the depression years and that type of thing with some of the civilian conservation camps where it was always believed the best way to deliver conservation on a national basis was to do it in cooperation with local input and local people. Um, we have conservation planners, soil scientists, biologists, a whole host of specialists. And uh, we've done, we're known for a soil mapping all over the United States. If anyone with their GIS layers has used like soils information, it's all developed through our agency, it's all online. And just for your information, the Wayne County Soil Survey, which was done back in 1969 and 1970, um, the, the soil mapping stopped at Dearborn because that's, it was viewed as things were too urban from there on out. Well, now that we're done with our soil mapping in the state of Michigan, we're going back and doing updates. Uh, funding is in place and efforts will begin on the Wayne County Soil Survey to do an update of it, including the, the complete mapping of the city of Detroit. All those wheels are in motion. We've been working with communities. Okay, so the business at hand, why I'm here. I'm here to talk about conservation programs. Most recently, the 2008 uh, Farm Bill, and as well as the 2002 Farm Bill, where NRCS had a very increased role in managing different conservation programs and working through our local districts and getting, helping local landowners, units of government address conservation issues, which, uh, you know, whether soil erosion, wind erosion, a whole variety of things. So with that, some of the different programs that I want to uh, uh, make you aware of and inform you on as far as opportunities as well as uh, impacts here uh, right close to home, I want to, uh, uh, there'd be the Environmental Quality Incentive Program, the Wildlife Habitat Incentive Program, the Conservation Stewardship Program, the Wetland Reserve Program, the Farm and Ranchland Protection Program, and the Conservation Reserve Program. Now, in talking with Lauren, and I called her again this morning, and I was told I had, you know, kind of in the 10 minute range, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on these. I may go just a few minutes over, but I, I'll really try to uh, be to the point. Um, first off, with the conservation programs, and as far as the farm bill and all, my interest is in on conservation programs. That's what I have an interest and a charge to do. I'm not gonna speculate about the next farm bill, give my opinions, I'm gonna speak strictly to the 2008 farm bill and its, and its impact it's had. Uh, last year alone, of those programs, the funding that came through those programs, federal dollars, in Washtenaw County, $3,552,379 in farm bill conservation money came into Washtenaw County. In Wayne County, it was $25,795. we are doing a lot more in Wayne County. A little bit why there's such a difference in there is, and I'll talk in a little bit, but the Farm and Ranch and Protection Program and the Ann Arbor Greenbelt and some of those purchase and development rights. There's some dollars that came in through there. But overall, though, there's been a, a pretty good economic impact 
in the delivery of some of these conservation programs in Washtenaw Wayne County, as well as the rest of the state of Michigan. Uh, the Environmental Quality Incentive Program, like all of our programs, it's voluntary. We're not regulatory. There's a place, I'm sure, for regulatory agencies, but that's not us. We, we work with people because they come to us. And even more so than that, with some of the, the beginning and new and beginning farmers and socially disadvantaged, we have a real strong outreach program to, to make people aware of some of the opportunities that are available. But the Environmental Quality Incentive Program, it's voluntary and it offers financial and technical assistance to put in some conservation practices. How it works is they work with the Natural Resources Conservation Service and the local conservation district. We, they submit applications, we, uh, we rank the application, we help them, to, we develop a conservation plan for their property. Uh, so everything's kind of planned out in advance and then uh, applications are ranked so that the public is getting the best return on their dollars in the form of uh, resource concerns being addressed. As far as financial assistance, a lot of the practices that are done, it's they're like flat rate type payments, they call them payment rates, and it covers about 75% of the cost or as a result of the, with the 2008 Farm Bill, with the socially disadvantaged, uh, which would be more minority-based farm operations, or new and beginning farmers, which are farmers that have been farming for 10 years or less, uh, they can sign, when they sign up, there's uh, the, 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 the cost list that they're working from is a little higher. It's, it's figured on about 90% of the cost of the uh, of the practice. The, um, after the practice is installed is when they can be reimbursed. Um, as far as the assistance in Michigan, why I mentioned the Environmental Quality Incentive Program is that's really our flagship program with NRCS as far as delivering conservation on private farms. And uh, in Michigan alone, there's been 18.8 uh, .8 million in uh, the Environmental Quality Incentive Program uh, funding delivered on farms. And I'm, I'm talking all ranges of farms, new and beginning, mid-size, larger farms. Uh, we can't pick and choose. We, we deliver to people that are eligible and come in and sign up. Uh, there's a breakdown of that, all the different programs I mentioned. Uh, the Environmental Quality Incentive Program is uh, this thing doesn't have a pointer on it, does it? A little electronic? I don't think it does. I, li I like those, by the way. But, um, but as far as the breakdown, the Environmental Quality Incentive Program, that's about 53% of the dollars brought into Michigan to come through that. And the other one I want to point out is that Farm and Ranchland Protection Program, and that's for some of the, the purchase and development rights programs that like the Annenberg Green Belt that some of the townships have the federal matches to that, come through that program. And I'm being a little bit loose with the numbers, but I would venture to say Washington County got a, has a, got a pretty good chunk of that 17%. Uh, we're real leaders, uh, not only in Michigan, but, but nationwide uh, in, the, in some of those uh, preservation programs. Uh, as far as what's new under the Environmental Quality Incentive Program, there's a forest management pilot. So uh, people, forest landowners, can get dollars to do forest management plans on their property. Um, the organic initiative, we've already had two signups this past year, and we had a couple last year. It was new through the 2008 Farm Bill, and it's for farms where people want to work towards getting their organic certification through the USDA's National Organic Program. And people can come in and sign up. And if they qualify, I mean, if, if they are accepted, they have a contract developed. And actually, the dollars through that program don't pay for organic certification. What they do do is like, whether it's a nutrient management or pest management or seasonal high tunnels, people can get financial assistance to do practices 
that would be in an organic system plan uh, through one of the certifying agents they're working with. Uh, the other one, the seasonal high tunnels, we've been real leaders in that. That came out last year for the first time. And by seasonal high tunnels, I'm talking about like type of hoop house type structures, not greenhouses. You can't use raised beds. It's for planting in the ground. And <clears throat> we've uh, done a bunch of those. Um, with the seasonal high tunnels, we have projects in the city of Detroit. We have them in Wayne County. We have them around Washtenaw County. We're doing a lot with, uh, through these more recent provisions, we're working with more community supported agriculture and that type of thing. It's really been exciting. And the Deputy Secretary of Agriculture, Kathleen Merrigan, was down last year. We took a tour and we went out to some project sites uh, that we are working on that type of thing. Um, so that's been really exciting. By the year 2012 will be the final year of, or, or the third year of the pilot for the seasonal high tunnels. Where it goes from that, I don't know. Uh, just some conservation practices and equip. Uh, conservation tillage, grass waterways, that agrochemical handling facility. We're doing a lot with farms. We work with dairy farms, big farms, mid-sized farms, uh, farms that are a tenth of an acre, a whole wide range. But that, uh, that uh, agrochemical handling facility, facilities, we're doing a lot with secondary containment for liquid fertilizer systems and that type of thing. Um, and we get a fair amount of demand for that. Uh, on some old dairy farms, old manure pits that were put in years back, we have assistance. We can help them decommission some of those pits so it'll be all put back together and safe and that type of thing. Uh, seasonal high tunnels, nutrient management, pest management, there's timber stand improvement, invasive species removal, brush management, the list goes on. So, but those, most of those can uh, fall under the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. Uh, there is a complete list of practices online. I'll give you a website here in a little bit. Uh, seasonal high tunnels, that's not a real good picture, but that's the inside. Everything planted on the ground inside that tunnel. Uh, we've had people, as a result of this initiative, where they come in and for a new beginning, they can be a new and beginning farmer, kind of a, more of a startup type thing. The only catch is, is to meet when they sign their farms up at the Farm Service Agency, which they need to establish records, uh, there is the requirement that in the past year they've produced and or sold at least $1,000 in ag products, which is really fairly minimal. Uh, and that's to meet the farm definition. You get the, your farm records established, and we had people, a, a bunch of people, just come in and sign up for seasonal high tunnels. Um, and so I wanted to mention that. Application process. For any of these programs, you can apply year-round. Uh, but they have announced selection periods. Uh, and then the first time applicants, they do need to set up farm records. Um, things are put out there in the press on a regular basis. Uh, we have a public information officer, Brian Bueller, out of Lansing. Lots of press releases go out, things go out in Farm Bureau. A lot of the uh, new and beginning farmer groups, organic type things, we try to be very transparent. And so people, by the time they call us or come into their office, they're already fairly uh, informed of projects. Just want to mention the Wildlife Habitat and Center Program. If you don't have a farm or you have some property, you want to do things with prairie grass plantings, uh, tree plantings, there's things through the, uh, the, we call it the WIP program. The Conservation Stewardship Program was more recent. And that's one, it's where if you've been farming and you have a base level of conservation and you're willing to do things like, like enhancements to it, there's a conservation stewardship program where there can be some financial assistance on that. Uh, the wetland reserve program, that's where if you have a field on your property, maybe the tile no longer works very well or a drainage ditch and that where you are willing to go in, uh, break tile, plug them, 
plug drainage ditches and let everything revert back to wetland, there can be some financial compensation for that, uh, for the wetland reserve program. I do want to emphasize though, that is not designed to address existing wetlands. Uh, people will call us a bunch on that and they got a wetland and they just got their tax assessments and, and then they're like, kind of, oh, can I sign it up? And, uh, and, and no, that, that's for taking ground where it was converted years back and we put it back into a wetland use. Uh, Farm and Ranch and Protection Program, that is the one. Ann Arbor Greenbelt, and there's about five or six townships with PDR ordinances with funding mechanisms here in Washington County. Uh, but to, to touch this money, to utilize it, you have to, it has to be locally driven. You have to have a purchase and development rights ordinance passed. You have to have a local funding mechanism. And if so, you can apply. And Washington County, there's been a lot of these applications. Uh, we, we, uh, we do prime soils uh, verifications for them. We do environmental inspections. We do develop conservation plans all in support of that federal match dollars for local programs. So that's been a real exciting thing to work with over the, the last number of years. Uh, most recently, there was uh, some dollars to the Environmental Protection Agency going into the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. We did some plans related to water quality with that for uh, very specified, specific watersheds. And the last thing, conservation technical assistance. This has been a real bread and butter for us over the years. And that's anyone just calling up with a, you know, an erosion issue with questions on soils where they're not signing up for a program. They're just calling in, wanting some technical assistance, wanting you know, that type of thing. And that's just under the category of conservation technical assistance. Uh, we're over on Jackson Road at 7203 Jackson Road. Uh, that website up there is great. The mi.nrcs.usda.gov, it's a portal to all kinds of things on, on our plant database, on our national web soil survey, on program links, things for educators. Uh, my daughter works for an engineering firm down in, in uh, Missouri and she always, you know, didn't pay a lot of attention to what I was doing over the years. And now she's been in that line of work, and she was saying, oh, you know, our website, our, our technical information is utilized by a lot of private businesses and firms and that type of thing. And uh, so take note of that. And uh, I heard we're going to have questions later, so I probably went a few minutes over, but I'll talk to you guys. Thanks. <laughs>